Good morning. If you get a lot of wind noise, I apologize in advance. Desert Sentinel asked me to look at the recent Supreme Court case, the Colorado Supreme Court case that Eric Brandt just prevailed in. Congratulations to you, Mr. Brandt. I disagree with your notification, but congratulations on your on your win. Uh, Desert Sentinel was concerned that now everybody who believes like Brandt is going to be citing this particular case, and he wants to know what it means. Is it, is there some broad constitutional concerns that we can take from this case? And uh, well, let me just address the the elephant in the room. This is a Colorado Supreme Court case that construes a Colorado statute. So if you're not in Colorado, then you're not looking at Colorado Supreme Court cases, and you're not the subject of Colorado jury tampering laws. So that makes it pretty simple. But if you are in Colorado, and you are concerned about Colorado jury tampering laws, uh, the, the moral of the case is pretty simple. Um, as long as you are not communicating with jurors in an attempt to influence them on a specific case, then you should be fine. And by should be fine, I mean that the state has to allege and prove that you were attempting to interfere or change the outcome of a specific case. If they can't prove that, well, then they're not going to win. Now, Mr. Brandt did, at the trial court level, argue successfully to the trial court judge that he was on a designated public forum and that the statute was overbroad. And the trial court found that the statute on its face was not overbroad, but as applied to Eric Brandt because he was handing out these pamphlets on a designated public forum that it was overbroad as applied to him. Now the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court both found it, they affirmed the lower court's decision, but on different grounds. They did not find that the statute was unconstitutional. They did what they're supposed to do. They construed the statute in such a way as to not have to reach constitutional questions. They construed it in such a way that the statute was narrowly tailored enough or that it was specific enough that they didn't have to address the constitutional issues. So the statute is fine. It is constitutional, or at least they didn't have to find it was unconstitutional yet. Um, so the statute is still enforceable. The only change is, the only new wrinkle is that the state has to allege and prove that the charged person was attempting to influence the outcome of a specific case. So I hope that helps. I, I know it probably doesn't. I'm sure there are people who are going to continue to say that the statute is unconstitutional and maybe one day a court in Colorado will find that statute is unconstitutional. But uh, just bear in mind that it only applies to Colorado and uh, it only applies to that that one case or that one um, statute. I was just thinking about Colorado. It's starting to get colder out here in California. The temperatures have dropped. Yesterday was 67. Today's supposed to be about 67 again. It's supposed to start raining here sometime today. I'm thinking it's going to be cold in Colorado soon, like cold, cold, like Colorado kind of cold. Rocky Mountain High kind of cold. And I'm thinking all those auditors that went up in the late spring, all that crew, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how much fun they're going to have in a Colorado winter. Or maybe they're going to go to sunnier, or warmer climes. It'll be interesting to find out, see how far their activism goes in Colorado. 
in the winter. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.